Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're pulling apart the wild, mind-bending drama that is Devs. Buckle up, because this is going to take you on one hell of a ride. The premiere episode of Devs opens in San Francisco, where we meet Sergey and Lily, a young couple working at Amaya, a powerful and secretive tech company led by a CEO named Forrest. Sergey, a talented AI developer, is handpicked to join Amaya's most mysterious and prestigious division called Devs, after an impressive presentation. The team operates in a heavily restricted facility hidden deep in the woods and guarded with extreme security. The entries through a vacuum-sealed gold shimmering cube suspended inside a large structure. At first, Sergei is overwhelmed by the opportunity, believing it to be the pinnacle of his career. Forrest personally brings him into the dev's facility, where Sergei finally glimpses at the heart of the project, an immense quantum computer. Forrest explains that devs is about determinism, the idea that everything that happens is the result of cause and effect, predictable down to the smallest detail if one has enough information. However, as Sergei begins working, his excitement quickly turns to alarm. What he sees inside, Devs shakes him, making him feel nauseous and causing him to vomit. His behavior grows frantic, and in a pivotal moment, he secretly copies code onto his smartwatch, attempting to smuggle data out. Forrest and his second-in-command, Katie, detect his betrayal almost instantly. Sergei's world collapses as Forrest confronts him outside the building in a chilling, soft-spoken manner. Forrest explains that determined Feminism leaves no room for free will, and Sergei's fate is sealed. Soon after, Forrest and Kenton, Amaya's ruthless head of security, suffocates Sergei with a plastic bag. Meanwhile, Lily grows suspicious when Sergei doesn't come home. Not long after, she's told by Amaya's security team that Sergei apparently took his own life. Kenton escorts her to the morgue to identify Sergei's body and shows her the CCTV footage. According to their official story, Sergei walked into a park and set himself on fire, but Lily immediately senses something is off. Forrest enters, pretending to be unaware of what happened to Sergei, and Kenton explains. Lily senses something off, and Kenton's cold, rehearsed demeanor only heightens her senses. Now back at home, Lily begins combing through Sergei's belongings. While searching his phone, she discovers a Sudoku app, confusing her as Sergei disliked Sudoku. Upon opening the app, Lily is met with a password screen. Overwhelmed, Lily turns to her ex-boyfriend Jamie, a skilled programmer. At first, she hopes for his help in obtaining clues, but instead, he curses at her and leaves her alone. At night, Lily is woken up to the news of found footage where Sergei douses himself in gasoline and lights himself on fire. Unable to believe her eyes, she rushes to the site only to find his burnt remains on the ground. Now we move on to episode two. Following the revelation of Sergei's body, Lily and Forrest discuss the idea of death, and Forrest is revealed to be haunted by personal tragedy. A massive statue of a little girl towers over Amaya's campus, representing Forrest's late daughter. His Grief shapes his entire worldview and devotion to the Devs project. With assurance that Lily's position at Amaya guarantees her stability, Forrest allows her to go home to grieve. Back at home, Lily feigns strength on a call with her mother, but struggles to get herself together. Growing desperate, she reaches out to Jamie once again and finally convinces him to help after explaining what happened with Sergey. The app reveals itself to be a Russian messaging platform, causing Lily to gain more suspicion rather than answers. Determined to uncover the truth, Lily digs deeper into Sergey's phone and manages to crack the coded messages. Soon after, someone responds and directs her to a meeting the next morning at 9. Clinging to the hope of answers, she agrees. The following day at the meeting spot, she encounters a man named Anton, who reveals himself as a Russian intelligence agent. He explains that Sergei's true mission has been to infiltrate devs and report back to Moscow, something that ultimately led to his death. Anton urges Lily to continue investigating, but their exchange doesn't go unnoticed. Kenton observes from a distance, clearly frustrated that Lily refuses to let the matter drop. Not long after, Kenton confronts Anton in the parking lot. He makes it clear he knows about the espionage and threatens to silence Lily if Anton interferes again. Anton unfazed mocks his tough guy act and the confrontation quickly escalates into a fight. The two even address each other by different names, Adam and Joe, hinting at shadowy pasts. Although Anton initially gains the upper hand, Kenton turns the tables and strangles him to death. Meanwhile, completely unaware of the deadly clash, Lily leaves a blunt curse message on a window signaling her refusal to rely on Anton or be intimidated into giving up. Moving on to episode 3, a senator arrives at the devs compound by helicopter to meet with Forrest. She presses him about his project, but Forrest offers only a vague explanation, calling it a prediction algorithm and refusing to elaborate further. Elsewhere, Lily is still deeply unsettled by Sergei's supposed suicide. Outside the office, she confides in her co-worker Leanne, voicing her doubts 
and insisting the video of his death must have been fabricated. Their conversation is cut short when Lily's friend Jen shows up supporting Lily on the surface, but later pulling Leanne aside to reveal that Lily has a history of schizophrenic episodes. Jen accompanies Lily to see Kenton. As Lily starts rambling about patterns, Jen's expression turns skeptical and doesn't agree with her, which sends Lily fleeing in distress. Her panic drives her onto a ledge outside, right as Forrest is showing the senator around. Spotting her, Forrest calmly radios Kenton, instructing him to defuse the situation. On the balcony, Kenton gently convinces Lily to step down, even suggesting she may be correct about Russian involvement. The senator departs shortly after boarding her helicopter, unaware of the drama. Once Lily and Jen leave together, Lily smiles as her breakdown was staged, a diversion so Jen could slip into the office and steal critical data. Later, Forrest debriefs with Kenton, who reassures him that Lily poses no real threat. Thanks to her mental health history, any claims she makes would be dismissed as delusions, making her more of a liability to herself than to Debs. That night, Lily goes to Jamie, explaining she needs help analyzing the footage Jen managed to extract from Kenton's office. Reluctantly, he agrees. As they pour over their recordings, Jamie points out that the fire's movement is identical in every frame, which is evidence of digital tampering. The implication is chilling. Sergei didn't burn himself alive. He was killed, and the fire was added afterward to cover it up. In a flashback to the night of Sergei's death, Kenton and his men drenched Sergei's corpse in gasoline and set the scene, confirming beyond doubt that his death was a murder staged to look like suicide. Moving on to episode 4, Inside Devs. The team sits quietly while alarms echo through the facility. No one panics. Katie, in particular, remains composed, barely reacting when Forrest arrives. He heads into the particle chamber, where the projection shows the faint figure of a woman crawling across the floor. Katie follows and warns him against watching, but Forrest refuses to look away. The two then talk about tram lines, fixed paths of cause and effect, where both past and future are immovable. The unsettling implication is that what they're seeing is inevitable. The woman in the projection is Lily, and the vision suggests her future ends in death. Meanwhile, Lily wakes up at Jamie's apartment. Over coffee, she admits she's convinced devs will kill her. Outside her home, Kenton questions Pete about her whereabouts and notices the defiant note she left, confirming his suspicions. When Lily finally returns, Kenton is waiting. He insists she needs medical help and convinces her to see a doctor. During her appointment, her personal history is discussed in detail. While across town, Jamie hurriedly tidies his flat, preparing for what's coming. Back at Dev's, an employee named Lyndon makes a startling breakthrough. Excited, he calls the team together and plays a recording he's pulled from the system, which is an astonishingly clear voice he claims belongs to Jesus Christ. The group reacts with amazement, but Forrest remains stone-faced. Dismissing it as little more than a gimmick, he explains that their model could generate infinite variations of events, meaning this Jesus isn't exactly Jesus, but simply a version. With a cold finality, Forrest declares Lyndon has compromised the project and fires him on the spot. Elsewhere, Kenton drives Lily from the doctor's office, realizing he intends to kill her. She panics and yanks the steering wheel, forcing the car into a crash. She flees and makes her way back to Jamie, where she frantically calls the police, reporting Sergei's murder. Overwhelmed, she clings to Jamie for reassurance. But their moment of sanctuary is short-lived. Police soon storm the apartment, accompanied by Kenton, who has arranged for Lily to be taken away under claims of mental instability. As she screams and resists, officers drag her out. With Lily gone, Kenton calmly turns to Jamie, shuts the curtains, and closes the door behind him. Moving on to episode 5, Lily remains confined in a psychiatric ward, replaying memories of her tangled relationships with Sergei and Jamie. The devs machine reflects these memories back, layering different versions of Lily, Sergei, and Jamie in the same space, as if the past and its alternate variations coexist side by side. Meanwhile, while Lily is locked away, Jamie suffers at the hands of Kenton. He tortures Jamie, bending back his fingers until it snaps, and makes it clear that Jamie's family will pay the price if he dares to help Lily again. Every second of this brutality is monitored by Katie through the dev system, yet her attention soon drifts from the torture to Lily's childhood, a vision of her playing checkers with her father, then a memory of her reconnecting with Sergei on the Amaya campus after ending things with Jamie. From there, the simulations turn to Katie's own past. A university lecture becomes the stage. Forrest sits with another woman while Katie listens elsewhere in the room. At the woman's urging, the lecturer needles Katie by championing the von Neumann-Wigner interpretation of quantum mechanics. Katie, furious, interrupts to argue for Everett's many-worlds theory and storms out. Outside, the machine generates several Katies leaving the hall, each one reacting differently to the moment. Forrest approaches the real Katie, offering to cover her tuition and brings her into his work. The projection then shifts to the early days of devs. On a growing table, objects like 
sugar cubes and mice are placed down. Their structures pulled apart and reconstructed. The tests appear to succeed, signaling the project's first step towards something extraordinary. But soon, the machine turns to Forrest's defining wound. It replays the night his wife and daughter returned home. As he stands outside waiting, another car collides with theirs. One version shows Forrest running helplessly to the wreckage. Another shows him holding his wife and daughter alive. Both outcomes exist in the machine, but only one belongs to his lived reality. Katie watches silently as Forrest's tragedy plays out again. Back in the present, Katie tells Forrest that Debs itself functions as his trial. If the system works, it proves determinism, meaning he never had a choice that night, never any power to save his daughter. Elsewhere, Jamie calls his father, urging him to hide the family in a hotel for safety. At the same time, Kenton warns Forrest and Katie that he will look out for himself if the company collapses. Katie coldly reminds him that killing Lily isn't within his power, a claim Kenton refuses to accept. Finally, Jamie slips into Lily's hospital room through a window. Together, they climb out and flee. Katie, still watching through Debs, sees their escape and smiles faintly, as if she knew this outcome was coming all along. Next up, episode 6. In a flashback, young Amaya is seen laughing and playing with Forrest and her mother. The warmth of the past contrasts sharply with the tense present. As Stuart returns to his trailer, only to find Lyndon asking him to convince Forrest to allow his return to Debs. Meanwhile, Lily wakes in a motel, disoriented and unsure how she got there. Jamie explains he helped her escape the involuntary psychiatric hold that had her under heavy medication, omitting the brutal torture Kenton inflicted on her. Together, they head to Forrest's home, where Katie is revealed to be romantically involved with Forrest. Once inside, Katie requests a private conversation with Lily. In the quiet of the house, she drops a bombshell. Sergei stole Dev's source code, and Kenton killed him. She also admits her involvement with Forrest. When Lily asks what Dev's actually is, Katie challenges her notion of free will. Nothing in the world, she insists, happens randomly, and that every event has a cause. She explains that Debs calculates all forces in the universe, predicting both future outcomes and reconstructing past events. At the same time, outside, Forrest and Jamie share a rare moment of normalcy while talking about loss. Inside, however, Katie deepens Lily's understanding. The Devs machine models the universe with perfect determinism, yet after a certain point, its predictive power hits a limit. The visualization becomes static and opaque. Katie warns that in just 21 hours, Lily will trigger an event capable of disrupting determinism itself, potentially breaking the laws of cause and effect. At first, Lily struggles with the idea of choice, questioning whether she can avoid devs. Gradually, though, she begins to see Katie's perspective on inevitability. Later, Lily and Jamie share a private moment, sleeping together in her room, while Kenton spies on them from a distance. Convinced, Forrest and Katie have allied with Lily and Jamie. Not long after, Katie, in a quiet exchange with Forrest, reveals she hasn't disclosed everything to Lily. Despite the looming crisis, the two admit their deep feelings for each other, acknowledging that the pivotal event they've been anticipating is just hours away. Moving on to episode 7, the next morning, Katie prepares to leave Forrest's house. Both she and Forrest have glimpsed the future and know that Lyndon will end up in her car. Meanwhile, Lily shares with Jamie her intention to defy Deb's predictions. She plans to avoid going to Amaya and stay home, challenging the machine's deterministic calculations. Soon after, Katie drives Lyndon to a dam and reveals her doubts about Forrest's assumptions. She warns Lyndon that just seconds into the future, he will be climbing over the dam's railing, but she refuses to disclose whether he will survive. Her goal is to test his trust in the Everett interpretation. In some realities, he lives. In others, he dies. Accepting both outcomes is the only way to confront fate. Initially, Lyndon balances carefully, but he ultimately falls. His descent is shown repeatedly, emphasizing the slow, inevitable pull of death. Stewart narrates how humans fear the steady approach of their end, underscoring the fragility of life. Back at Devs, he explains to Forrest that the machine succeeds because participants followed Lyndon's broader perspective rather than Forrest's narrow obsessions. Meanwhile, danger strikes Lily. Kenton breaks into her home, shooting Jamie. Lily hides and fights back, striking him with a vase. But Kenton survives and attacks her. At the last moment, a homeless man intervenes, strangling Kenton with a wire and killing him. Only then does the man reveal he works for Russian intelligence and was assigned to protect Sergei, with orders to watch over Lily after Sergei's death. He warns that he will soon vanish and presents Lily with a choice, head to the CIA or return to Hong Kong. After a tense moment of decision, she resolves to go to Devs, embracing the path that may ultimately alter the machine's deterministic calculations. Moving on to episode 8, the final chapter begins, with Lily standing on the brink of destiny, awaiting her moment inside Devs. Stuart whispers nearby as flashes of forest and his daughter flicker through her mind, a reminder of the personal stakes intertwined with the machine's cold calculations. At last, she approaches the infamous door leading to the projection chamber and finds Forrest waiting. They sit together and Lily admits she's lost sense of who she is. Forrest apologizes 
apologizes, but reminds her that life, in his view, is merely something observed unfolding. He explains determinism and shows her a visualization of his daughter, sparking a tense debate. Lily challenges the machine's implications, claiming she is just a stimulation, while Forrest insists he is a messianic figure, mocking the idea that she could disrupt his control. Using the machine, Forrest predicts Lily's every move, including her pulling a gun. She hesitates, giving him a moment to demonstrate the simulation's final breakdown. Katie outside the room, Lily aiming a gun, and the elevator sequence from prior episodes. In a climactic act, Lily shoots Forrest in the lift. The vacuum seal fails, tipping the elevator and echoing the images of her crawling across the floor. But this time, as the simulation ends, Lily repeats the elevator sequence, but deliberately refuses to follow Forrest's predetermined path, calling him a false prophet. The lift still crashes, killing them both, as Stuart triggers the emergency override. Katie watches in shock, questioning his actions. Stuart remains cold, insisting it was all predetermined. Meanwhile, Forrest exists inside the system as a simulation. Lily's act of disobedience has rewritten events. He recognizes her as the original sin, the one who defied his deterministic authority. In the aftermath, Katie bids the simulated Forrest farewell as he heads toward his daughter. Lily then wakes up back in her apartment, with Sergei alive, and events rewound to just before his assignment to Amaya. With the timeline reset, Lily approaches devs with new understanding and determination, finding Forrest alive along with his wife and daughter. Together, Forrest and Lily discuss their alternate existence within the system. They're aware of the simulation while everyone else remains oblivious, living ordinary lives. Forrest explains that bearing this knowledge allows them to experience their best possible world. They step back and let the simulation continue, content in their awareness. In the final moments, Katie reports the simulation's results to her superiors. Lily reunites with Jamie, embracing him tightly, having chosen love, defiance, and the chance to live a reality she helped shape. And that's where the first season of Devs ends. It's been years since the first season ended, leaving us with numerous questions. Do you guys think there will be a second season? Share your thoughts and your theories, and let's discuss them in the comment section down below. And I will see you guys in the next one.